I have a problem today. This is a problem I'm having with my Asian pear grafted tree. It has four different varieties in it. And if you notice, this one is brown, kind of blackish. It's only at the new shoots, the new growth of this year, there's some fruit setting, but they don't look like they're gonna make it. I actually saw this lack on the flower set. I didn't really think much of it. I saw it on one or two of them, so I just plucked them off and throw them away. Well, I didn't realize, but this is actually blight, specifically fire blight. It has progressed to be out in the shoot, so now it's shoot blight. It's not in the... But if you look closer here, you can also see what it does to young little fruit sets. See that? Within two weeks, now it progressed to this. I was just gone from work and I come back and I see this so surprised it gone so fast so imagine a tree with this kind of small stature and size it can overtake very quickly if you don't take care of it we're just gonna be aggressive at cutting and we have to look and see inspect it again every day for a sign of re-emergence of fire blight. Okay, this right here I see black spot leaves. So from this one, I'm gonna cut all the way down to maybe here. This sanitizes off. This alcohol wipes. I'm gonna do this in between every cuts from the different branches because we don't want to accidentally bring this disease to other healthy part of the plant. This particular variety here is hoisin. And here too, I'm just gonna chop this off down to maybe here, a foot off, okay? I'm just gonna cut all the way down to here, okay? So sad. I try to make a slanted cut so that if water and rain it doesn't collect there, it will just slide down. I try to make a cut so that when the branch grow out, it's coming outside, not toward the inside. Now blight doesn't just infect by contact really. It has to enter into the plant from somewhere, you know, into the tissue, just like us. Uh, we have bacteria and fungus on our skin, but doesn't mean it causes problem. Um, so that's why we normally see blights in the spring because that's when the flower come out and those bugs will then go into the plant through the blossom, um, the enter, entry point through the blossom and then go inside the plant. So that's why in the spring you need to pay attention to, do, to your plant and look for it. Okay. So this here, I'm gonna to have to cut off some of these yummy potential fruit, but however, it won't be yummy anymore because they're gonna be all black and blue in a few weeks here. And then just fall off. Okay, so this is disease. And you can see here is some dark spots on the leaves. You know what that means, right? And this is a telltale sign that the uh, has become an internal infection because um, for it to come to up to the leaf like this, it probably is spreading through the xylem. And the xylem of the plant is basically like the vasculature tissue, uh, which bring nutrients and water from the root up to the leaf. From here, even though it's not really black on the branch yet, we'll make a cut about, oh man, I really want those fruit, but you know, this is, black looking too oh my goodness I'm gonna cut down here well and then you inspect and see whether it's black here or not it kind of look black here is that the black because of the shears has little like a uh, rust on it I'm gonna shave this off and just to make sure is there a black or brown tissue 
left or is that just from the shear that I'm using? Yeah, it looks fine to me. Yeah, that's a healthy tissue. This is a 20th century. This is not sunburn, okay? This is not from the heat. This is from fire blight. It's dark from here all the way down to here. Cut it down, get rid of it, and trash it. The black discoloration stop right there. So I'm gonna cut down probably almost a foot, okay? Just to be safe. It's black all the way down to here right so i'm going to oh, i don't know i want these two fruits <laughs> if i cut down to here it's only half a footish not even you know what i'm gonna take a chance okay i'm just gonna cut about six inches down being stingy like that is when it become a problem because you're trying to save something and then the disease persists. Mm, you know what? I'm just gonna cut it down here, okay? I'm just gonna cut it here, it's okay. You gotta give some for the future. Okay, now we're gonna inspect the wood. It looks good. You know, I'm paranoid now. I'm paranoid. This one right here, so Chororo is also one of the variety that's more resistant to fire blight. There's only one fruit on this one. On a closer inspection, I see this color right here and I don't like it. So I'm just gonna cut it off. But I'm gonna leave that fruit because I wanna taste it. The stem, the branch is not so healthy. Look. You see brown, brown, green. And you know, it might not be anything, but might be a frost burn from last year. Anyway, growing the right kind is important. If you come over here, this is my Korean giant, also called Olympic. I so, you know, from now on, I'm just gonna be more due diligent with uh, preventions and disease tolerance or disease resistance. There's no one variety that is completely, you know, escape this uh, blight infection. Less work for us. Okay, so some other ones are um, named Kinko, Yonashi, Yali, Sinsu. And I will monitor these um, grafted branches and to make sure that if some infection come up, I will have to take care of it. And uh, I'm gonna have a regimen to spray these so stay tuned, I'll post those when I start them. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give a thumbs up.